Just do something to tell you who I am, you know? Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Seek NR. And today we're going to briefly talk about the first four issues of Batman The Long Halloween. I was originally going to do this in like two episode increments, but I figured I got to catch up because the movie comes out today, June 22nd, 2021. And I'm recording this at midnight, or actually it's like 12.30 now. Um, I already recorded one video tonight, and I'm going to record one more, just the audio here. So hopefully you guys enjoy how I present this episode. So I'll have some of the artwork go up as well as I'm talking about this. But this series was written by Jeff Loeb, and it was drawn by Tim Sale, one of my favorite comic book artists of all time. Um, I love this guy's stuff, and when these two team up together... It really is magic. And uh, like they say at the beginning of this book, they dedicated Long Halloween to Archie Goodwin uh, and the memory of the magic that was him. And I thought that was really sweet and awesome, especially being a big fan of Archie myself. Um, I kind of consider myself a student of his, even though we've never actually uh, met. I never took a class or a course from him. But uh, everything I feel like I know about storytelling, a lot of it comes from Archie and just studying his work and, you know, listening to interviews and talking to people that did know him and hearing kind of what they, you know, liked about Archie, what he brought out in them. Like some of the, you know, some people will say like, oh, he brought out a better writer in me or a better artist or whatever. And uh, it's really cool to hear someone talk so highly about a guy, even though there were people out there that are like, yeah, he was tough to work with. He was, you know, really hard on us sometimes. Uh, but sometimes people see that being hard on them turned out to work out for the better and then other people obviously don't see it that way but either way um, I've always looked up to Archie and I'm a big fan of his and I'm a big fan of the two gentlemen that put this book together and now we have an animated movie that is based off of it which is really really cool so uh, this will contain some spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet I would say go watch that you know definitely for sure and if you haven't read this comic book please go pick up The Long Halloween I believe there's going to be a hardcover edition coming out very soon and obviously you can still pick it up in trade paperback or omnibus form a bunch of other versions exist right now and hopefully if you're listening to this years later they, they keep reprinting this because this is a definitely a modern day classic even though it's about you know 20 years old now uh, but still it's it's very awesome it's a really good book so um so yeah let's start with chapter one which is called crime and this is basically the beginning of this story so uh jeff Loeb always said that when archie came to him they wanted jeff you know archie wanted jeff and tim sale to do something set in the year one universe. So basically what Frank Miller did with year one, Archie was like, what happens after that? Like, you know, how do we get from criminals that ran Gotham to the um, the lunatics, the freaks, the, you know, the Jokers and Riddlers and, and Poison Ivies? Like, how did we get from Maroney and uh, Falcone to, to the other guys, to the Joker and Two-Face and stuff like that. Like, how do we get there? What's the transition? And so that's when Jeff Loeb was like, all right, let's, let's do that. Let's tell that story. And that's ultimately what this book is about. I mean, this book is a mystery as well. There is a murderer that is showing up and killing people on the major holiday of each month. And so, uh, so yeah, that's kind of how this starts off. And I believe the first murder is on Halloween and then, uh, and then we get into Thanksgiving and, uh, we'll get into Christmas in this episode and also new years with the Joker. So Bruce Wayne is saying like he believes in Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent is the new DA. Um, you know, he's, or he's been a DA for a little while in Gotham, but he's starting to rise up and he's starting to ruffle feathers. And so this is kind of like the story you see in the dark Knight movie, uh, with, uh, with Heath Ledger and everything, which is you have Harvey Dent, who is the white knight, like Bruce doesn't exactly see Harvey as a way out because at this point in the comic, you know, Bruce does not have a love interest. I mean, kind of has Selena Kyle, a uh, Catwoman. And they, you know, meet at the beginning of the story. They, they dance together as their alter egos, Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle. But then, you know, they meet throughout the rest of the book in their uh, superhero or super, you know, antihero costumes uh, with Batman and Catwoman. And it's, it's pretty fun to watch their dance go back and forth. And there is kind of a prequel to this comic called Catwoman Win in Rome because there is a scene where you'll see Carmine Falcone with scars on his cheeks. And, uh, and that's actually a scratch from Catwoman. And Win in Rome kind of explains more of that storyline and everything. So I won't spoil that to go read that if you haven't read Catwoman when in Rome. And now we have a scene with Catwoman, you know, she's breaking in, you know, trying to steal money from Carmine Falcone. Again, you have to read when in Rome to know why they have a feud and stuff. But Batman shows up to stop her. And this is really cool because it, I think the scene is replicated in some kind of way. It, it has to be because it looks like it is in the new Batman movie coming out uh, starring Robert Pattinson. 
and Zoe Kravitz, who's playing uh, Catwoman in the movie. There's a scene in the trailer where they kind of, she's like trying to break into a safe and the way it's shot, the angles, it kind of mirrors the comic book panels from this comic book a little bit. And then the way they, you know, face off and fight each other kind of reminds me of a little bit of this comic. So that's pretty cool. So they're, you know, having a tussle in the room while she's trying to steal money from Falcone and then Falcone catches them and sends his guards in and then Batman has to throw down a smoke bomb and escape and he chases Catwoman around the city and of course she gets away from him. <laughs> so uh, so then he kind of detours and goes back to police headquarters where he talks to Jim Gordon and Harvey Dent on the roof of GCPD and this is where they're packed forms. You know, there's a scene like this in, uh, in the Dark Knight movie where they all three meet on top of GCPD and they're talking about going after the mob's money and that it's going to be it, things are going to get bad and things are going to get desperate. And they're going to come after their families and all this other stuff. And that's kind of that's where this comes from or that scene kind of comes from this comic book where Harvey is like, look, they're going to come after us. And uh, if we go after their money in particular. So Batman's like, yeah, let me figure this out. Like, I, I have some information on them, but uh, regarding that, but let me, you know, give me a night or two to figure it out. So as Bruce Wayne, you know, he's using his connections and his money to kind of almost open up his books so that people like Carmen Falcone, who are clearly corrupted mobsters and stuff, uh, they want a piece of the, the Wayne Foundation and what they offer. And so Bruce's board members all want, uh, you know, Falcone involved. Like there's like, it's like a 50-50 split. And the guy, there's a guy named Richard who's like the deal breaker on it. So Richard says, okay, I'll, I'll be, um, I'll say yes to Falcone. And Bruce finds out that this Richard guy is dirty and he kind of works for Falcone. So he then shows up to Richard's house as Batman and threatens him and says, look, keep the, keep that money away from, you know, Wayne Enterprises from anywhere else. You force Falcone to have to lock his money up somewhere safe outside of a bank. Um, and he goes, or else I'm coming for that money. And so, you know, Richard takes the bait. He passes that word along. The money gets moved into a warehouse. And then, of course, Richard gets killed for being a traitor. <laughs> so, yeah, the mob does not play around. And meanwhile, while that's happening and the warehouse thing's being set up, we get our first look at a hint of the holiday killer. And that's what basically is going to be the main mystery behind this. Cause the book itself, like I said, is about the, the extinction of the traditional mobsters that ran Gotham for decades and the, you know, the kind of the takeover by Joker and the rest of them. And, uh, and that all the, the kind of the, the line that threads those two together is Harvey Dent. And so, you know, obviously I don't want to spoil too much and I want to get too ahead of the story, but for those of you who read this probably already know where we're going. And know the story, the tragic story of Harvey Dent, but uh, but him and Gilda, you know, are talking, and she's like, you know, I'm really scared about this case, and he's like, yeah, I know, we'll figure this out, and uh, and that's when bodies start popping up. So we first have the first body, who's uh, someone, I think it's uh, someone who in the bathtub, but they, they get shot, um, and they're they're killed and bleeding out. I think it's Richard Vitti, or it's someone I think for one of the the mobsters, like works for the mobsters. So he's the first one to die. And from there, we cut to Batman talking to Catwoman on a rooftop, you know, asking her like, hey, you know, have you seen any money or trucks being moved around? You kind of have your ear on the city and the streets. And she's like, look, I'll tell you, but, you know, I'm taking a chance on you. But, you know, don't let this blow up in my face, basically. And wouldn't you know, uh, that's exactly what Batman's going to do, kind of, because he leads Harvey Dent there. And they just see stacks and stacks of money. So again, a kind of a scene from the Dark Knight movie. Only in that movie, there was a warehouse full of money and the Joker burned it. Here you have Batman and Harvey Dent uh, you know, making the decision to burn it. And this is all the hard cash from all the mobsters. Like all their, they use a lot of the same guys are funneling their monies, uh, especially Falcone. This is a big hit for him. And they just burn that money down. And, uh, and in retaliation, because, uh, you know, Falcone's got eyes everywhere. He's like, you know what? Just strike out at all my enemies who might have done this. And that leads to Harvey Dent's house being blown up with Harvey and Gilda inside. So it seems like Harvey Dent is dead at the moment, but we know he's not. Uh, so then the second book takes place at Thanksgiving. It introduces us to Solomon Grundy and Batman is chasing, you know, um, you know, a, basically our a bad guy, you know, someone he needs to question to talk about, um, you know, where Falcone is. His name is Mickey, I think is his name. And uh, he's just like a low level snitch. So Batman gets him uh, and then Mickey slips away, gets into the sewer and runs into Solomon Grundy where Batman is forced to punch Solomon Grundy. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to. He's like, look, I'm just here for the guy. Just give me him. And Solomon Grundy's like, you know, just 
Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday, he doesn't really understand or care, and he just sees enemies and he's like attacking. So Batman has to hurt him, and he does hurt Solomon Grundy, and Solomon Grundy slinks away, and Batman takes his, uh, you know, his criminal, his snitch, back to Gotham PD, or so we think. But there's some cool twists there uh, where the, the, the snitch is not actually who you think he is, and there's a cool reveal, and I'll save some of that in case they do it in the movie, but definitely really neat moment. Um, and then Batman, to show that he's not completely heartless, he goes back down to the sewers on Thanksgiving and brings a Thanksgiving meal to Solomon Grundy. Um, and then meanwhile, up in you know on the surface world, we have, uh, you know, above above the streets, or above the sewers, I guess, we have some criminals that are having Thanksgiving dinner, and they get gunned down by the holiday killer and that's how issue two ends so now it's starting to escalate now it was first it was one mobster dead now it's like five or six at a thanksgiving dinner and now we skip ahead again to the next month is christmas uh, in december and we have the joker reading about the holiday killer and how this holiday killer is is doing all these bad things and the joker doesn't like that because the joker wants to be the one to do these bad things and so when he's reading this newspaper he's reading it in the house of a family who he's tied up on their couch with uh, their christmas lights <laughs> and then he steals all their presents and just leaves uh so he doesn't kill anybody but he's just he's just you know but that's joker like not every time he kills someone sometimes he just does random weird things and this was one of those where he just he just steals all their presents for no reason <laughs> and tie and leaves them tied up with their Christmas lights in their living room. So, um, so yeah, I thought that that was just a neat scene. And so Batman is now forced to talk to Gordon, uh, to bring him and ask him to bring him to see the calendar man at Arkham Asylum. And the calendar man is someone who has a history of, uh, being obsessed with, you know, holidays. And so Batman just assumed, okay, this guy showed up not too long ago. We caught him. So he's kind of like a Hannibal Lecter type, which I, I like. I always say that's how I would write the Joker. If I ever wrote a Batman comic, I would make the Joker like a Hannibal Lecter type. But Jeff Loeb wanted to make, you know, the Calendar Man, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Hannibal Lecter type. And I think that works very well in the story because Batman does need answers and he needs clues. And this Calendar Man seems to know a little bit more than he says. He kind of speaks in riddles, kind of like how Riddler is, but not like exact riddles. But he doesn't, almost like he doesn't finish sentences. He just kind of gives you enough for you to figure it out. And then Batman's like, oh, it's a waste of time. Let's just get out of here. But really what uh, Julian Day, who is the calendar man, that's his real name, Julian Day, he's really actually telling Batman some useful information. Batman's just getting frustrated because now they have two months, you know, two murder uh, scenes and no answers. And now everyone is just being a suspect. Like it's literally going for everyone from Bruce Wayne to Harvey Dent to even Jim Gordon. Like, and they, the way they draw this is pretty neat because in, you know, the, the killer is using like a, a, a basic gun, like a street level gun you can get anywhere. And they're putting a baby nipple over the end of the gun to act as a silencer, which is cheap, but it's very effective. Um, so that could signal that maybe someone just doesn't have the money to do this, but then yet they leave the gun and they file off the, the, you know, the gun number, the serial number on the gun. They file that off. They put tape around the handle so that there's no fingerprints. Um, and then they put the baby nipple on and then they leave the gun at the, the scene of the crime. So they're literally daring the cops, like, please find something. You'll find nothing. And so Batman's like, who am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a Riddler? Am I dealing with someone new? Like what's going on? And is it, you know, could it be Harvey Dent? Could it be other people? Like, you know, there's some people saying it's other mob members, like maybe Maroney is like moving in on Falcone's, uh, you know, position. And so he's sending, you know, a killer in to take out Falcone's men. But then now Maroney's men start showing up dead. And it's, it's just a nonstop, uh, you know, back and forth thing where every time they think they know who the killer is, that person ends up dead. And one of the people they're suspecting is Alberto Falcone. They're like, what if the son is trying to take over the father's empire? Because the son has been a disappointment to the father. Alberto Falcone is like this weird, you know, like a weaselly, skinny little dude with glasses who's just kind of a creepo. And he's not really mob material. And maybe that's something. Maybe he's just rising up to to take over the mob and uh, take over his father's empire. So he's a suspect. But in this issue, we actually see him end up dead or he's he, at least he gets shot and he gets thrown off the side of his yacht uh, so that you know that's happening and meanwhile joker is not into this he's like i don't like a random killer going around killing people like that's my job so the joker is trying to find out who it is so he goes to maroney and he's like look my gun's bigger maroney who is holiday and then when maroney leaves he runs into batman and batman's like why was joker here 
And he's like, I don't know, because he's a lunatic. And he's like, and, you know, you're all lunatics. Ever since, you know, you showed up, Batman, this whole town has been taken over by lunatics. Like, we get more and more every couple weeks. And he's like, this is, this town used to be, like, organized crime. And now it's just, like, a bunch of weirdos running around in costumes with gimmicks. And it's pretty neat, because you get that perspective that the mob just doesn't like what's going on in Gotham. So, uh, so yeah, and so, you know, you find out that the explosion at Harvey Dent and Gilda's house that was not an actual, I mean, it did blow up, but they were safe. Uh, Harvey kind of was tipped off by it. So he was able to save Gilda. And now they're working with, um, you know, Gordon and, and then starting to work behind the scenes with other people that we'll start revealing too, where Harvey is just getting desperate. Just like in the movie, you know, The Dark Knight, he starts, he start, he's willing to cut corners at some points. And, and it's, it's scary because, you know, Batman is like, look, man, we need someone like you. We need a good DA who will stand up against the criminals. And we understand you have a wife and you're trying to keep her safe, but you're you're going too far. And we, we can't have that. I mean, even to the point where the Joker shows up to Harvey Dent's house and is like, are you the killer? And then Joker beats the crap out of Harvey. And he's like, no, he's like, not, nah, you can't. He's like, you don't even have the, the spine to, you know, beat me to save your, your wife. And he's like, so fine. He, so he just leaves, you know, Harvey Dent and Gilda on the floor in their living room. And he's like, yeah, you're too weak. There's no way you're the holiday killer. He's like, you're, 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 you, you put on a good face to act tough, but you're not. And, uh, and then he goes off to find out who it is and ends up Joker, knocks on Carmine Falcone's door. Well, he doesn't knock on his door. He kind of just crawls into his bed and says, ding dong. <laughs> He's like, tell me uh, everything you know about Holiday and use all your resources to find them or I'm going to just start killing everybody in Gotham. And as much as Carmine Falcone is a mobster and he's a criminal and stuff, a bunch of people just dying left and right because he can't do something is not something he wants on his conscience. So, uh, so yeah, so then more, like I said, more bodies start showing up, other people getting killed. Uh, we see someone here on their doorstep and there's the Joker had visited that person just moments before and dropped all their cards and they fought back. But then after Joker, you know, slinked away, the holiday killer shot this person. And so now Batman standing over the body with the the holiday or the, you know, the, the cards, basically the, the Joker's calling card. And he thinks it's Joker that did it. So he puts no waste, no time. And the next issue is chapter four. That's the final one we're going to talk about tonight. And that is new year's Eve. And uh, I really like that cover there with the, the two wine glasses hitting and you have Batman Joker's face in it. That's really good. Um, but Joker has commandeered, uh, let's say a, uh, like a small, plane uh like a solo flying plane and uh and he is willing to bring it into gotham square and release a gas or whatever he's going to do throw throw explosives and he's going to kill everyone in gotham square because he's like you know what batman that place is full of people it's new year's eve it's kind of like our version of Times square you know gotham square and it's going to be full of people so probably the holiday killer will be there but if not at least we rule out up like 10,000 or 20,000 suspects or a hundred thousand suspects. And Batman's like, you're crazy. And he's like, you're just now figuring that out. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So now mobsters like on both sides are getting taken out. We've already seen uh, mobsters on Falcone's side, but pretty soon we'll be seeing Maroney's men being killed and it's just going to start escalating. It's, it's going to get really bad here for these guys. And these three men who just wanted to make a pact and prevent things from sliding into chaos um, by hitting the mob. And then meanwhile, not understanding at the time that this new killer was popping up that was going to be an even bigger problem than, you know, just the mob. And that's kind of what, you know, the Dark Knight did. The Dark Knight just made the holiday killer Joker and had Joker go around doing a bunch of random things that were made up for the movie, obviously. It's not the same things that happened in this book, but that idea of the mob, you know, trying to hold their stuff together and Batman and Harvey Dent and Gordon thinking that once they take down the mob, Gotham will be clean for like two years, you know, 18 months or whatever of clean city streets uh, from Gotham. And they thought that was their big prize and pie in the sky and that they could start turning things around in Gotham and give people hope. And then someone like the Joker came in and that's what Holiday's doing. This Holiday killer is coming in and, you know, eating up the newspapers, scaring people, putting fear into people. And it's, it's causing a problem, obviously, and it's causing distrust from the community and the people in their police department. And it's obviously, you know, making Gordon wonder if his partnership with Batman is a good idea and if bringing Harvey Dent into all this was a good idea. And, uh, and it's, so it's really neat. And that's more or less the exploration of these characters and what this story goes through. Um, and then has some cool fights in it like this, where it's just Batman and Joker fighting on a plane. And Batman trying to stop him, which he eventually does, crashes the plane into Gotham Harbor and brings the Joker in 
uh, you know, to jail on new, as as the clock strikes midnight. So so yeah, so it's it's really neat. These four issues that we discussed today are you know just the tip of the iceberg. There's 13 issues total for Long Halloween. So the next episode we do will probably cover episodes or issues five through eight or five through nine. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll read them, reread them and we'll, we'll figure it out, but I don't want to get too far ahead of the next movie. Um, so maybe somewhere between now, which you know, the, the animated movie part one comes out today, Batman long Halloween. So make sure you go pick it up, uh, buy it on Blu-ray or DVD, or you can get on digital. If you want to do that, it all came out in digital and in physical copy on the same day today. But in about, I don't know, four or five weeks from now, end of July, part two will come out on digital and then a few weeks after that, in the first week of August, we'll get the physical version of A Long Halloween Part 2. So somewhere between now and then, I'll cover issues 5 through 8 or 5 through 9, and we'll do an episode on that. And then the final one will release the day the second movie comes out, and that'll be, you know, that'll cover issues 10 through 13. Uh, so that's what I'll probably do, 5 through 9, and then 10 through 13. So, uh, so yeah, so thank you. Let me know what you think. Have you read the series? Are you a big fan? Try to avoid spoilers for issues 5 through 13 if you can, and just focus on talking about issues 1 through 4 down below, which is, you know, Halloween all the way up to Christmas or actually to New Year's. So it's Halloween to New Year's. So try to keep the comments within those four issues and we'll talk about the other issues as we cover them in future videos. So thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. We'll see you all in the future. Peace.